Um, until about five years ago, I'd led a pretty unremarkable life. Um, I met my husband, Simon, when I was 30. Um, when we were 33, we got married. Um, and I was delighted to be pregnant pretty much straight away. Um, loved being pregnant. Um, it's a bit different the time round. Um, <laughs> I loved what it represented, a whole new life, um, and becoming parents. I left work three weeks before my due date, and it, everything took me by surprise. I went into labour that very evening. Um, I had a really uncompli um, uncomplicated pregnancy, but the birth was very different. It was fraught with complications. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Um, he was eventually delivered uh, with a bit of help from some scissors and some forceps, and he was whisked straight away from me. He was very fat and blue. Um, and I remember there was no cry, just a kind of bleat. Um, it, was, it was really scary. Eventually, he was given back to me um, and Simon, and there was something really nagging at me. I didn't know what it was. Um, I kept counting his fingers, and there was five on each hand. Um, but there was just something about him. I couldn't put my finger on it. 24 hours um, after he was born, a midwife said she'd asked a paediatrician to come and talk to us. Still blissfully ignorant, um, didn't really understand why. Um, he, he talked in riddles, he talked about holes in hearts, and really it all sounded quite redeemable. Um, I just thought maybe he wouldn't be that great at sports. Um, six days later, in a different room in the hospital, another paediatrician said to us, I'm sure it's of no surprise, but baby Sebastian has Down syndrome. Well, it was a massive surprise. Um, it really was the day someone drew a thick, black, heavy line through the middle of my life. I'd always seen myself as really lucky, and I felt I knew what Down syndrome meant, and I felt that I couldn't cope. What should have been the happiest day of my life was probably one of the worst. I thought I knew what Down syndrome meant, and as I said, I didn't want it. Um, you know, I had no doubt I loved my baby, but I didn't want him to have Downs. Um, we were given loads of leaflets, um, and all the cliches came out. You know, special children are given to special people. Um, you know, happy, loving, good at singing and dancing, all of that. Um, we went home. The house was bursting with cards and presents. Everything was perfect, except for one thing. So in a blur and on a mission, trying to take a bit of control of the situation, we threw ourselves into research. Um, and it was just page and page and page of characteristics, um, you know, all the health problems, the mental developmental delay. Um, it was a really horrible time, and thinking of the future just made me feel sick to my stomach. I used to look at Seb, and I'd almost tick off every characteristic, his nose, um, his little ears, his broad hands. Um, it was a really horrible time. And at that time, I remember also seeing various advertising on TV. One was a Waitrose ad. It was a giant picnic, hundreds of families, and I knew there wouldn't be a family there that represented mine. And at a time when, you know, I was feeling very isolated and different, it was, you know, adding to that, really. When he was about six weeks old, um, I met a school friend in Bath. She was visiting for the weekend. I took Seb along, felt really comfortable with her, as you do with school friends. Um, and for the first time, I felt like a normal new mum. I felt a little flush of pride. She would and hard over him, as you do. Um, and as I walked home, I, I felt a lightness and, you know, felt great. Um, and then I saw a, a father with two boys. And they, they looked quite Scandinavian, very beautiful. Um, and it was a real punch in the face. I saw this normal family, and it really hurt. And just to add to that, as I walked off, already feeling pretty bad, um, I saw a gentleman who was about 50, who had Down syndrome. Um, he was holding on to the arm of who I assumed was his elderly mother. And it was just the stereotypical view of someone with Down syndrome. And I lost it. I walked home in floods of tears. I don't know who saw me. <laughs> um, but they probably thought I was a lunatic. Um, walked into the front door and my husband said, what on earth is wrong? Um, up to that point, he had allowed me to grieve and cry, and, you know, I seemed to cry all the time. Um, but actually, he got really firm with me and just said, look, if you can't accept him, how do you expect society to accept him? Um, you know, you're his mum, you're his biggest backer, get a grip. Um, and it was quite harsh, but he was so right. And then came the light bulb moment. He said to me, imagine the day he walks up to you and says, hiya, mum. 
and such a small thing was such a significant thing. Suddenly I saw Seb as an individual, not a leaflet, not a list of characteristics. He was a person. Bit by bit the hurt began to lift and I realised he was a baby just like any other. He laughed, he cried, he crawled, um, he learned to eat, he started babbling, he did everything you expect a baby to do. He even wore nice clothes. So we carried on as normal. It gave me the kick up the backside. You know, we went to water babies, to soccer tots, to play groups. Um, and I really saw his personality coming through and I saw the effect he had on everyone else. He's very charming and he was very good at charming other people. So I thought, how can I get this message further? Because I know how despairing I was when he was born unnecessarily. So for World Down Syndrome Day in 2011, I wrote an article about my experience. I posted it on Facebook. I wasn't sure whether it was the right thing to do. I didn't want my friends to feel uncomfortable, but the response was amazing. So I decided to start a Facebook page that was all about our lives together. I made sure it wasn't sugar-coated and isn't life wonderful. It showed the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, and Seb certainly delivered the material as well, especially when we were potty training. Um, just to show you how bright he is, one day, he was three years old, he, I saw him sneak a Brio train into his pants, drop it in the potty, and stand up and ask for a chocolate button. So <laughs> he certainly gave me the material I needed. So then I started thinking, how can I take this even further? How can I change these stereotypes? So I wrote to lots of retailers, people whose clothes he wore, um, and we were lucky that he got invited to do a modelling shoot for Jojo Mammon Baby. We were absolutely delighted with the results, but still, it hadn't quite made the wave I wanted it to. Loads of emails to lots of retailers, no response. So I turned to Facebook. It's such a public forum. I knew that if I posted on a big retailer's website, uh, Facebook page, it would get a reaction, and it certainly did. I posted on M&S a photo of Seb, and the re reaction was incredible, everybody urging them to you know, represent diversity. So he was in their Christmas catalogue this year. Um, you probably spot him with the reindeer ears. Um, and he was great. The shoot went really well. Um, and it made our local paper. And from the local paper, it just snowballed. And probably one of the weirdest Saturdays of my life. <laughs> we made it onto the front page of the Times. And then from that, the calls just kept coming and coming. Um, we did BBC Breakfast, CNN. It, it was just crazy. But then came probably the most significant contact. We were asked to be in the TV ad. Um, and everybody knows that the Christmas campaign is the big one for the retailers. So for someone to put Seb in to that was just so incredible. Um, and we believe a piece of history, certainly in the UK. Um, we went to the shoot. Jake Narva did it. He is famous for doing Beyonce videos, Kylie videos. And to see him holding my son with all these cool kids was just incredible. And again, the wave of media interest followed and it gave us an amazing platform to talk about Down syndrome. But then really did come some amazing news. I had contact from a mother. She had a three week old baby. She was in the place that I'd been when Seb was born and she'd seen us on BBC Breakfast and it had really given her faith that the future was going to be all right. And we had lots more contact very similar to that. Here's just a snapshot of some of those. Um, again, just echoing the sentiments of that mother. Um, and actually, I had one lady who, whose little boy was in the special care baby unit and um, her father had brought in the article and, and it really gave her the boost that she needed. Elizabeth Hurley tweeted about us um, and we were told also that we were being discussed in a lot of um, lectures and things. So even brainy people were talking about us. Um, and then there's just a final one. Um, somebody contacted us to say that we had inspired them to return to practice, which was great. There was probably only one negative comment that kept coming up. A lot of people on the forums online were saying, well, you know, of course they've used him. He's cute. He doesn't even look like he has Downs. Hello, that's the point. You know, what does Down syndrome look like? Seb has Downs and that's it. You know, he does or doesn't look like he has Downs. He has it. So, um, about a month ago, we were invited back to do a Bowdoin casting. He actually did do one before he did the M&S thing, but he really screwed it up. <laughs> he was such a diva, he wouldn't do anything. And actually, I was really relieved when he didn't get a call to do it because it would have been for the wrong reasons. 
But they invited us back for a second chance, and I heard on the grapevine um, that there were going to be a, a lot of other children there with Downs. And at first I thought, well, how's that going to work? It's a bit tokenistic. What have they done? You know, scoured the streets for kids with Downs. Um, but actually, when I got there, I realised that, you know, my ignorance was there again. You know, these children were all individuals. You know, there was a little girl with blonde hair and blue eyes, another with chestnut hair and olive skin. Um, every single one of them beautiful enough to be there. You could imagine them in a Bowdoin catalogue. Problem is, shot myself in the foot here. Competition. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so out of interest, I, I asked one of the dads, you know, what brought you here? Um, and he said, oh, my wife saw a little boy with Downs who'd been in an m &S advert, and it had given her the confidence to contact Bowdoin. Didn't really like to say, yeah, that was my son. <laughs> um, but it wasn't really until I was in the car on the way home I realised how amazing that actually was. So what for the future? I, I just want people to see that people like my son are individuals. They're not defined by their chromosomes. Um, you know, they're very able. We lead a really typical family life. Um, and what's really sad is because um, there's an increase in older mothers, the actual conception rate of Down syndrome babies is higher than ever, but the live birth rate is lower. And that's thanks to um, more advanced testing, 96%. It might not be quite that, but that's the latest statistic I could find of babies with Downs are terminated. That, to me, is so abhorrent. To think that my child doesn't deserve to be here is, is ridiculous. Um, obviously, being pregnant, you know, the terminology used, everybody talks about the risk of Downs rather than the chance, and there is a lot of emphasis on the testing for Downs. So I think it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. People just believe that's the thing you do. You just kind of get rid um, so I'm really passionate about changing views and, you know, I'd never judge anyone's decision, but I just want it to be an informed decision on up-to-date information. So um, here's just some slides of Seb, um, just to show what an individual he is. Um, he's a brother, he has likes, he loves ice cream, um, he loves Moomin, his cat. Um, uh, you know, he forms relationships, he has hobbies, he's brilliant on his scooter, he likes chips. Um, you know, people with a disability, um, particularly Downs, they represent their families and their upbringing. They're not all like each other and they're not like leaflets. Here's just another slide taken from an exhibition just to show again, you know, do they look like they have Downs? They do. <laughs> um, and here's just another slide to show, you know, they, people fall in love with Down syndrome, they have jobs, they get married, they have aspirations. Um, and here, I love this, it's um, again from an exhibition, and each of these people were asked to bring along something that meant something to them, particularly like the pink metallic handbag, very nice. Um, and the two guys at the bottom, Chelsea season ticket, which my husband, very impressed with that. Um, London rail card, again, just showing that what he really values is his independence. So Seb started at mainstream school um, this year, and I've actually learned a lot from the children in his class. They don't see Seb as having downs, he's just Seb. Um, they, it just shows, I think, that prejudice is learnt. Um, you know, they see his strengths. One of his little friends, Billy, says he loves playing hide and seek with Seb because he finds all the best places to hide. Um, you know, and when we turn up in the morning and, and the greeting he gets, he's just one of the gang. He's off to his um, first school birthday party tomorrow, so we're really proud of that. Um, so he's just celebrated his fifth birthday. It's been the most incredible journey. He has no idea how much he's taught me, um, and I'm so thankful for that because I really was very ignorant before. I've learned to see beyond the genes. Um, you know, Seb is an individual. And just last weekend, um, I took my boys to the shop. And they were every bit the two boys I'd seen when he was a baby. There was no difference. So this really just represents how much I would give to hold that little baby again, um, you know, with the feelings I have now and not the fear that I had then. It was about a day old there, and that was a couple of weeks ago. Hard day at school, I think. Um, so that's it. I think I've learned to see beyond the genes. I just hope we can spread that message a lot further. <laughs>